Hello, today we're going to be creating some flow shadows and some other tricks. I'm using my Photoshop elements to date and I'm regrouping some of the interface windows so you can see it better in your screen. Uh, I have my top menus, I have my side uh, menus, and I have my layer window. I also want to see um, my history, undo history so I can then erase the things that I may not want, okay? So I'm going to place it over here. You can place it whatever it works for you. All right, so the first thing is I'm going to be working on the background layer and the silhouette layer to create these shadows. So I'm going to make all the other layers invisible because I won't be needing them right now, okay? I'm going to duplicate my background layer uh, I can uh, double click or right click on the layer itself and my little interface window comes up duplicate layer I'm gonna call that one floor shadow okay great so now I have my background and a floor shadow and then I'm also going to duplicate um, the silhouette uh, layered and um, I'm gonna call that one silhouette shadow okay there we go so I have now the background the floor shadow the silhouette and the silhouette shadow I'm also going to drag the silhouette shadow down so it's underneath the silhouette itself okay now we're going to work first on the floor shadow. This is very simple. I use different tricks. I kind of do the same thing that happens in theater where you can mix different uh, shadows on the floor depending on where the lighting is coming from. For our purposes, I'm going to create one general sort of floor shadow and then I'm going to create a very specific silhouette shadow. I usually like to work with the marquee tool over here. But uh, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to double click on it or right click depending on your computer and I'm gonna use the elliptical shape and then I'm gonna go on the floor and I'm just gonna place it like there under our actor right there okay how's that I'm going to now paint that I have my paint tool um, here I have I don't want red I'm gonna use a charcoal so I have my paint tool uh, it's a 27% and it's on the, I don't want this solve, I want normal. Okay, and now let's see, I'm going to make it 50%. There we go. Now, if you think that that's too dark, which I actually think it is for me, um, I'm just going to, I can change the layer opacity. So I'm going to say I want that layer to be 50%. There we go. I like that. Now I, um, I have uh, the marquee tool, right? And I'm gonna just click on it. So that's my floor shadow, okay? So we can pretend that has the top-down lighting coming into that, all right? Now let's create a silhouette shadow. I'm gonna click on the silhouette shadow um, layer, and I'm gonna hide my silhouette layer, all righty? Now, I can also hide the floor shadow and the background, so I can completely isolate this silhouette that I'm working with. And I could use the magic wand and then I can do select inverse to select this shape or because I'm working on a layer where there's many invisible pixels I can simply lock those pixels how, how do I do that I click on the lock option as you can see the interface window says lock transparent pixels so that's what I'm doing okay okay looks like I did it let's see it looks highlighted yeah now it looks highlighted okay so they are locked what does that mean well for my next step I'm gonna be painting this uh, a dark color I'm gonna use the same charcoal gray I'm gonna use a larger brush uh, let me go over here I should be large enough and I'm gonna put it 100% okay now I'm gonna paint what happens is your painting st stays within the actual drawing and it doesn't go into the transparent pixels. If I hadn't locked that, 
Okay, let me show you real quick. Um, I'm going to unlock it. And I'm going to try to brush now. See what happens? I'm actually painting on the transparent pixels. I'm going to go back. Uh, let's see. I wanted that and I wanted this one. So I'm using my undo history to go back a few steps. I'm going to lock the transparent pixels again and then I'm going to continue painting. There we go. can actually make this brush bigger so I can get done faster. There we go. Ooh, what happened? There we go. Okay, maybe too big and it's just thinking about it. There we go. All right. So now I have my really dark shadow. How is that? But if I put the silhouette back, of course, we're not going to see what the hell is going on here. To do that, you simply can now uh, go under image transform free transform if you have one of the created suites one of the cs5 etc the transform option is going to be under edit okay but for elements is under image so i'm going to choose free transform and now i can actually drag this dude down to the floor okay and i can say yes um, if you don't get the green symbol that i just got here you can simply double click on the marquee tool and I'm going to bring the silhouette back. So you can see now the shadow is right under her. Um, the feet are not matching, so I can go back to image, free transform. Just make sure that you're on the right layer. I'm on the silhouette shadow. And I can just drag it up because I want it to be really under her feet right there. And I say, yeah. Now, I don't really see much detail there. What to do? You can go back to image transform. Or some of you will have it under edit and you can do and you can go to the transform transform option and you're going to find perspective now some of you with the creative suite you're going to have more than these four options you may have as many as seven uh, but the one you want is perspective okay what does perspective do you can actually angle it okay i'm going to go this way because if i recall when i use my um uh, shadows the lighting source was coming from this side all right also, you can bring the top closer, so it's more like the actual perspective that you would see on a lighting uh, reflection. Uh, and I may drag it down just a little, like that. And I say, yes, that's the shadow that I want. All right? So now, now let's bring all the different elements together. And let's see if we like it. Now, I'm having issues with this now because it seems too far removed from the other one. So I'm going to go back to the floor shadow. I'm going to say image free transform okay um, it's not isolating the shadow the um, the actual floor shadow so I don't know if I could move it let me see no I think it selected the whole thing oh actually I can move it like that but then I will have too many shadows see what's happening so I'm gonna cancel that um, in general, what I would like this floor shadow to be is bigger. But maybe it's a matter of taste. Maybe I'm being too picky. What do you think? Anyway, I could go back and add more shadows if I wanted to. So I'm going to try that. Why not? So I'm going to use the marquee tool. And I'm going to actually make this a little bigger. Like that. And center a little bit more. Mm, I don't think I'm going to like that shape. So I'm going to get out of there. I'm just going to go here, okay, and then bring it on top of that one. Yeah, I think that that's basically, I wanted a shape that was a little bigger so the two shadows are connected. So I'm going to dump the paint again in there. Look at that, fabulous. Now they mix together beautifully. So I'm going to do marquee, say yes, okay, so I like that better so they are connected. So I have my top light and I have my high side light coming in creating this shadow. Cool. Okay, let's add all the other layers to see what it looks like. There we go. You can see this wonderful character that is developing in here. Uh, in addition, I also may want to use even more lighting. So I'm going to go to the floor shadow layer and uh, I'm going to go under um, let's say filter you may look into filter and you have 
various options depending on your Photoshop software. But usually under rendering, you can find lighting effects. And you may either have lens flare and lighting effects, or you may only have lens flare. For our purposes, I'm going to use lens flare. Okay. What does lens flare do? When the interface window opens, you're going to see it can create a spotlight effect in the background. Uh, as you can see here, you get this window that says lens flare, and you can change the brightness. The brighter I do it, the more obvious it becomes. See that? And I can also change the center. So I'm going to place it to the left side. Could you see how my highlight is here? So it's, and it's about this level, because that's where the highlight is. And then let's see what happens. I can also experiment with these different options here to see what it does. That's too bright. Movie Prime hmm, has too much. So I'm going to go back to that one. And I'm going to say OK. I'm waiting for the clock ticking. So there it is. Now, it's not as bright as I would like it to be. Uh, but as you know, I made this layer 45%. So I'm going to go to my original layer. And I'm going to go under Filter, Render, Lens Flare. The setting comes up. I'm going to say OK. OK, there we go. So now you see how much brightness this is adding to it. And uh, you may decide that that's too bright, right? So I can reopen or cancel. I can go back and undo history. See that? And I can uh, go back to layer. Uh, filter, render, lens flare, and I'm gonna make this one a little bit lighter. Just because, there we go. Okay, that, I think that, that will do it. There we go. I like that better. Again, it's all a matter of taste. I'm going to use my elliptic marquee tool again because now I actually want to create a frame for this. You can also use the square one. So this is my frame, okay? Uh, but I want to paint everything outside of a white. In order to do that, I have to use the magic one. Um, actually, I cannot use the magic one because I'm on the marquee. But I, what I can do is what we learned before. I can do select inverse. Um, see and now I have selected the outside of the lips instead of the inside and then I can decide to use I think I want to use white and I'm gonna use my paint paint bucket it's normal I'm gonna make it a hundred percent I'm gonna dump it there we go we have this wonderful white background and I dump it again now, the one thing, you see how there's sort of this transparency? Now, you may decide that, that you like that very much, or you can simply click on the floor shadow layer while keeping the marquee tool, and then the setting with the magic wand will remain, and then you can dump the paint bucket there. And now it's completely white, which is what I wanted. See that? Um, you can now double click on that. To save it. Oh, I'm in the paint bucket. Sorry, I can go back to the marquee tool and just click on that. There we go. So I like this effect very much. This is how I wanna do all my sketches for this particular set. The next thing would be to add font, and then we're also gonna experiment with adding patterns, etc. And also how to use the burn and the dodge to paint a little bit more so the skirt actually looks more realistic. But if you're doing a set of sketches, this is a technique to make them all unified, to have them all framed, and to, to, for all of them to look as together and as completely designed as possible. Thank you for watching.